And we finished the first two paragraphs. Venerable Subhuti asked the Buddha, Well, on the one, will there be living beings who can develop a true faith and believe in these words and sentences and chapters when these sentences are expounded to them? So Subhuti worried that in the future, not many followers would believe in this teaching. So the Buddha replied, do not speak like that. 500 years after the Tathagata has passed away, there will be those people who will observe the rules of morality and perform good deeds. Of course, these good deeds will result in good blessing, and these people will be able to develop faith and confidence in these sentences, that there is truth in it. So, the Buddha confirmed that there are bodhisattvas in the future who would have faith and believe in such teaching. Because this teaching is profound that this is a teaching of emptiness, a teaching of sunyata. And then the Buddha continued in the next paragraph, and I'll read it out word for word. We should know that such people will not have planted good virtuous roots in just one, two, three, four or five Buddha lands. They will have planted good virtues, roots, in countless thousands and tens of thousands of Buddha lands. That means, the Buddha said, Bodhisattvas who believe and, and believe in these words, they must have planted their virtuous roots, not just in one life, in, not just in one Buddha land, but in thousands of other Buddha lands, they have already have planted the virtuous roots. They already have the causes. They will already have cultivate causes for believing in this teaching. And remember last time we talked about the significance of the time dimensions of 500 years. The, Buddha, the Buddhist teaching will stay for 12,000 years. The first, the three epics. The first one is the... the, the um, the true Dharma epic. The second is the resembling Dharma epic for another thousand years. And then the Dharma ending epic for 10,000 years. Buddhism is disintegrating. So, next paragraph, upon hearing these sentences, there will arise in them a single thought of pure faith, subhuti, all who know and see the Tathagata will attain immeasurable merits. Why? Because they will have wiped out wrong notions of an ego, personality, a being and a life. They are not caught up with the wrong notion of Dharma and non-Dharma. Why? Because if their minds grasp the Dharma, they will stay cling to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. And this Bodhisattvas have, in the previous paragraph, it says a plant virtuous roots. What do we mean by virtuous roots? These roots are created from purification of one's behavior, speech, and thoughts. In the Chinese language, it's shen, shen kou yi. So they already have purified, the, the, the virtuous roots result in purification of behavior, speech, and thoughts. There's three. How is, how is karma created from an individual? Um, when a karma is created, what happened? Why is a, uh, uh, why, how is a karma created? It's created th through um, one's Behavior, action, action, speech, and thoughts. So what usually, what action is created from, are created from uh, the resulting karma? What actions are created? Actions? Q. 
killing, sexual misconduct, stealing. These are the three, in broad general terms, of course, there's a multitude of behavior uh, that could be created and result in, car in bad karma. Um, so, mind your action, your behavior. Killing, sexual misconduct, and stealing, in broad general terms. What karma is created from um, speech? I mean, how, how, how does speech create karma? Slandering, frivolous speech, cursing, lying, all that, from, from the mouth, from speech. Speech create bad karma. Of course, speech create good karma too. Trustworthiness, not lying, not, cur not cursing, not slandering, all this creating good karma. On the other hand, so actually action, speech, and thought, the karma created has three nature. Good karma, bad karma, and indifferent karma or neutral karma. So that's why we should all watch our thoughts, our actions, and our speech. They create karma. If karma is created, you subject yourself to retribution. What is retribution? The karma will lead to certain effects. Uh, there's a cost, there's effect. Nobody can avoid the effect if you have cultivated the cause. So, virtuous roots means that Karma is create good karma is created because it's virtuous, virtuous karma is created from action, speech, and thought. How do you create virtuous karma from, from behavior, speech, and thought? Through what? Through the observance of precepts, through practicing meditation, through practicing the six parameters. What are the six parameters? Giving or generosity, observance of precepts or morality, tolerance, endurances, patience, and diligence, hard working, and meditation, and wisdom, cultivate your wisdom. When it comes to simple terms, building up virtuous roots is nothing but watching your behavior, your speech, and thoughts. So this is about cultivating ourselves. So what is Buddhism, first-time commerce? Is it Buddhism just about meditating and sitting in there and doing nothing, an empty thought? It's about yourself, how to better yourself through your action, your behavior, your speech, and your thought, through your mind. How do you better yourself through mind, purification of your mind? Purifying your mind, that means you purify your thought, Purify your thought, you're cultivating virtues, roots. So, um, Buddhist when they are doing all this, when they're purifying the, themselves, uh, speech, action, and thought, through observance of precept, practicing meditation, and practicing the six parameters, when doing all that, after they have done that, in the process of doing that, they should not grasp to them too. They should not say, oh, I have done these good deeds. They should not grasp to it. So it says here, if they grasp to the Dharma, they will cling to the notion of ego, personality, being, and a life. So if they grasp to it, they would cling to the notion. They would cling to the four fallacious notions. What are the four fallacious lotions? Ego, personality, beings, and life. In the Chinese language, 我相, 人相, 众生相, 受解相. So it's all logically flow like that. The first six sections, the first, first six chapters, they flow logically into doing virtuous roots, cultivating virtuous roots, and not attaching and clinging to them by not following into the trap of the four 
fallacious notions. Do you understand the four, the meaning of the four fallacious notions, the four wrong notions? What is ego and what is personality? What's beings and what is life? What do they mean? If you don't even know the four fallacious notions, how can you continue the Diamond Sutra? That's the basic in the first six chapters. Not clinging to the four notions and not clinging to the three notions of the six parameters. The giver, the recipient, and the notion of giving. In, in dana, in giving, in generosity. Different, eh? the three, no, three attachments, the notions of attachment, and the three no, fallacious notions of ego, personality, beings, and life. How do we analyze these four, four, um, four fallacious notions? How, do we can, how can we always remember the four fallacious notions? It's easy to remember considering the world. 我像人像,终生像,受者像,它什么意思? You always have to remember the meaning of it. What is ego? What is ego? The first one, the first, the first wrong notion is ego. What is ego? That's me, that's I, my attachment. This is egoistic. This is, everybody has that ego. It's like a prison. You are living in the ego of, in the prison of your own ego. And that results in many, many problems. Being ego egoistic results in a lot of problems. I don't even have to delineate them for you. So ego. So when you think about the four fallacious notions, you think about yourself, which is the ego, and the ego of others too. Personality of the egos of all others. Because, because of, of, of this subject, you have that object. And that cons concerns the individuals. Ego and personality. About your ego, other people's ego, attachment to egos, which we should get rid of. And then what is this? Beings. Beings and life concerns a broad general term of the universe. What's the universe make up of? Time and space. Space is all the beings and all the environments. The mountains, the rivers, the animals, human beings and buildings and everything. We're attached to them. Not just to them, we're attached to wealth, reputation, power, status. We're attached to all of them. There's beings, space, all things surrounding me, I attach to them. I consider them real. I consider them as real stuff. That's the problem. I don't analyze them by its causality and its impermanence. I consider them as really exist. Because I consider them as really exist, I attach to them. I attach to the existence. So that's space. You're attached to whatever you can see, whatever you can sense. You're attached to what your eyes, your ears, your nose, your tongue interact to. You attach them, we attach them. And how about time? The last one, life. Remember, ego, personality, beings, and life? Life concerns about time. Life means continuity. We always think that we never thought of impermanence. We thought that death is always remote from us. We think that everything surrounding us will last for a long time. But that isn't true. It's always changing. It's changing every minute, every second. Just half an hour ago, everybody was having a good time in a hotel in Bombay. And then the next 15 minutes, something happened. It was quite peaceful before, and all of a sudden it turns into a disaster. Everything is changing. Nothing is not subject to changes. 
If you can find one thing that does not change, you tell me. I like to know what that is. Good things can change to be bad, but we shouldn't be negative about it. We shouldn't be pessimistic about it, because bad things can change to be good things too. Don't fall into the trap of misery. Don't fall into the trap of depression. Good things change to be best. Good, better thing. I mean, bad things can be good thing. Good things can be bad thing. It's all in our mind. If your mind is purified, you're doing it in the right way. If your mind is polluted, you're not going to the right way. So, what is ultimately the most important? Your mind, our mind. What is what is Buddhism is all about? Is that about prostration and burning an incense? And looking at these decorated flowers and statues and beautiful temple is not about that. It's about the mind, the study of the mind. Do you care to study the mind or not, or you don't care? You just you just go on every day as a sentient being, and when the time comes up, you say "sayonara" to your own body, because you go. Because that time will come up. Oh, uh, I w- I would like to read on to the next one. Why? Because if their mind grabs the Dharma, they will still cling to the notion of an ego, a personality, and a being and a life. Now, if you don't cling to the four fallacious notions, that means you don't cling to ego, personality, a being, and a life. And then you said to yourself, "Yes, that is an understanding in me. That is a Dharma in me, which I believe." I don't grasp these four things. I don't grasp that. Now that becomes a grasping in itself, because you believe that not you should. You believe that you you should empty the ego, the personality, the the, the beings and the life. Now that is self in an attachment. So it says, even that dharma, don't attach to it. Don't at, attach the notion that. These four notions are wrong, and I maintain it, and and we shouldn't be egoistic. Even that has to go. The four fallacious notion is a dharma. Even that dharma, grasping that dharma should go. And the next paragraph. Therefore, one should not grasp and hold on to the notion of dharma, nor that of non-dharma. You see, attachment to emptiness. Your att- attachment to the Dharma, to emptiness, is a disease as much as attachment to existence itself. You attach to emptiness; it itself is a disease. It's as it's worse as attaching to to existence. Those who continue to use this this medicine of emptiness after they have gained uh, after ga- they have gained possession of wisdom. They will only get sick again, because you you attach to emptiness now. So, first of all, you let go of ego, personality, beings, and life, and then you set up this dharma, emptiness, because you empty them out. Even emptiness have, has to go. So the dharma has to go, and even eliminating the dharma of emptying the the emptiness has to go. So there's no dharma. So when there's nothing, what happened? The question comes up is, in the Chinese language, 无我相、人相、众生相、受解相、非法相、非非无无非非法相、无非法相。If you get rid of all that, what do I have? <laughs> you get rid of everything. What 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 comes up? If if you get rid of everything, what comes up? You know what comes up? Wisdom comes up. Last paragraph. This is why Tathagata always said, "Big shoes, you should know that the Dharma I expound is likened to a raft. Even the Dharma should be cast aside. 
how much more so the non-dharma. All teaching must be abandoned, not to mention non-teachings. So it's a raft. You need a raft to go to Victoria. If you don't have a raft, this is just an example. If you don't have a ship, if you don't have a boat, how can you go to Victoria? How can you, how can you go, go, to the, go to Vancouver Island? So you need a raft. You need a raft to go there, to cross the river, the water, and once you reach it, you should get rid, you should cast aside the raft. Don't hang on to the raft. Leave the boat. If you don't leave the boat, how can you get ashore? Don't attach to the boat. So, no ego, no personality, no beings, no life, no dharma, no no dharma. Everything is negated, negated, negated. By negation. And then if everything is negated, what comes up? I'm worrying. If there's nothing, what comes up? Prajna comes up. It's just like a river when you get rid of all the pollutants. Finally, you get this real, original purity. No more pollutants. But our job is to get rid of those pollutants because the, uh, the purity of it is always there. The purity is already there. It always exists there. You don't have to worry about finding it. Once all the pollutants were removed, purity comes up. And what happens when purity comes up? People like to know, what do I get when purity comes up? When purity comes up, there's two things you get. The first thing is, you don't have an ego anymore. No ego, no I. When there's no ego, what result is that you have no mental defilements. No trouble, no worry, no anxiety, no disappointment, no fear, no greediness, no jealousy, no hatred, no violence. Nothing of that left because there's no mental defilements. Nothing got left about that. And when we reach that stage, that's an arahat stage, then you are away from life and death. No more reincarnation, no more life and death. And then there's another stage that if you continue, even what stays behind as the Dharma, the Nirvana, even Nirvana itself is gotten rid of. Then you come, you come to the stage of Anutra Samya Sambuddhi. That's the time when you reach Buddhahood. There's an ultimate liberation, um, ultimate bliss. So being an arahat, you already, you already have removed yourself from reincarnation. And if you, if you work further, you are in Anutra Samya Sambuddhi, supreme ultimate enlightenment. But if you can be the arahat, that would be great already. Because you are out from life and death. No more reincarnation. So we finished section six. It's basically Subhuti worry about future followers, whether they would trust and believe in this teaching. And the, and the Buddha said, there are Buddhistatwas who observe morality, who observe precepts, who practice the prajna, they will believe in it. Even in the ending stage, they will be Buddhistatwas. Because Buddhistatwas, the existence of Buddhistatwas will not be limited by time and space. They always would come back. And then the Buddha continued to expound his teaching by saying, don't cling to the four fallacious notions of ego, personality, beings and life. In other words, don't, don't cling to that dharma. 
And then you say, oh, then there's no Dharma. Even the concept of no Dharma has to be gotten rid of. And when everything is, is read, everything is, if everything disappears, prajna comes up. Real wisdom comes up. The purity comes up. If all the pollutants in the river are removed, don't worry about what's main, remain. Purity. And the purity has always been there. It hasn't, it hasn't been created, and we haven't even lost it before. It's always there. 